Today is both a sad day and a very joyful one as well for the Dallas Symphony Association. Speaking to the first point, we have just come from a meeting of the Executive Committee, which was followed by a meeting of the Board of Trustees of the Symphony Association. And at that meeting, Mr. Ralph Rogers, who did not attend, asked me to present and read to the meeting the following letter, which I will read to you. Dear David, this is my resignation as Chairman of the Board and Director of the Dallas Symphony Association, effective 12 o'clock noon, October 29. Since the facts which occasion this resignation are well known to you, I shall not elaborate. All of the directors and the musicians know that there are years of my life invested in the Dallas Symphony Orchestra, not to speak of the substantial funds which Mary Nell and I have provided. It goes without saying that I hope ways and means can be found to keep the orchestra alive as the men, women, and children of Dallas deserve no less. Will you please express to the directors my appreciation for the support they so generously gave to the symphony and to me over the years. Sincerely, Ralph B. Rogers. There is a happy aspect of the meeting of the Board of Trustees of the Symphony Association today. And this meeting, this portion of the meeting was conducted with enthusiasm and warmth that I haven't seen in a long time anywhere. I am referring to the action of the Executive Committee and of the Board of Trustees in appointing Maestro Bruslo not only as conductor of the Dallas Symphony and music director, but also as executive director. The trustees have authorized the officers to enter an agreement with Maestro Bruslo concerning this. This will involve a contract for two years, which could be extended by action of the association at its option for an additional year. Mr. Brusilov has agreed to accept this appointment. Now, as executive director, he will not only be the music director, but he will be in complete charge of the symphony's operations. In this work, of course, he will be assisted by Harold Jarrett, who will continue to function as general manager. With Mr. Rogers' departure, of course, we're all going to have to work a lot harder. As you know also, if we complete the current season, we will have met one of the very important conditions of obtaining the $2 million Ford Endowment. In order to do this, we're going to have to raise the sum of $450,000. I just do not believe that the citizens of this city will let the orchestra fall and lose this $2 million as a result of some unhappiness with the musicians. Our board of directors today was unanimous. Our trustees today were most unanimous and enthusiastic about our prospects to go forward. They recognize it's going to be difficult. And one of the reasons we're so enthusiastic is Anshul Fusilov. <coughs> Under his talented leadership, and his great musicianship, I am personally convinced, and our trustees are as well, that as time goes on, the symphony is going to play an increasingly greater part in the life of this great city and in North Texas generally than it has in the past. And with those remarks, I would like to, it's my great, great pleasure to introduce to you my... Mr. Brusilov, when you made your offer of the, the free concert, did you expect any kind of affirmative reply? No, not at all. Was this an opportunity to possibly further embarrass the orchestra into making a move? Oh, no, 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 not at all, not at all. I felt that it was a fine, honest, sincere suggestion. It wasn't my idea. And I thought it was my, since no one else wanted to do it, I decided I would present it to the orchestra. But I tell you why I knew they would not accept it. They've been backed into a corner. Fairly or unfairly, that's not the point right now. I'm not interested in that. But they were in a corner, and neither side was going to budge. I realized that, and that's why I was sure. But I tell you honestly, I still think it's a wonderful idea. 